the greatest American alive. Right, and I've worked with a lot of those individuals who also have child support obligations. So they're labeled both as, you know, ex-prisoners and deadbeat dads, right? You know, so not the most politically popular group when you're trying to help those folks, but they need assistance and the labels are not accurate. Hi, my name is Project Daddy. Of course, it doesn't say Project Daddy on my birth certificate. It says Project Baby. <laughs> and well, it might not say that either, but I do live in the projects and I am a father. I have three sons. And so for some reason, when Project Daddy tells his story, it gets marginalized and minimized. That means really small. But today we have Daniel Hatcher to translate my black story for me. And so then maybe you can empathize with my position. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. The greatest American alive. We also have child support obligations. So they're labeled both as, you know, ex-prisoners and deadbeat dads, right? You know, so not the most politically popular group when you're trying to help those folks. But they need assistance and the labels are not accurate. I'm triggered. When I was in prison, okay, I didn't mention I'm also a felon, but when I was in prison, uh, they taught me all types of cognitive things and how to control my feelings, but I'm upset right now. No, the, the, the narrative is not okay. That name calling the deadbeat dad, uh, uh, the dead broke shit, that's not acceptable, Daniel Hatcher. I know you didn't say it, Daniel Hatcher, but it, it affects me right here in my heart muscle. The children and their studies that look at, you know, what are these terms, fragile families, young fragile families when they have children at a young age, and there's potential for these families to work well together and, and to do well for their children. And even if they don't end up living together, to co-parent. Baby mama, did you hear what the white man said, baby mama? The white man said that we could have worked, you hear me? We was just a young couple in love, 19 and 17, before the government got all up in our damn business and everything. But, you know, if we get the government, Uncle Sam, could you please let me and my baby mama have a conversation with y'all without being all in the damn mix? Well, but again, when you force a poor mother to sue a poor father, that's not going to do much for that fragile relationship. Um, and if you have a father that's coming out of prison, and he's trying to get back on his feet and, and, and live above four. I mean, baby mama, you listen here, baby mama. Listen, you got me all up here at the courthouse in my good polo and everything. I know we have our disagreements and stuff like that, but like I only make $7.75 an hour. You know Project Daddy's doing the best that he can. So like, uh, could you like, please? I mean, Lord, please. I mean, Lord, baby mama. I mean, uh, the master of my future, the holder of all my economic well-being. Could you please not take me to court, take all my goddamn cash? I mean, uh, Daniel Hatch, what was you saying, sir? He's lucky enough to find him employment despite the criminal record. I mean, those are difficulties in itself. As soon as he starts to work, 65% of his wages will be garnished, right? So a lot of the low-income individuals in that case will quit, you know, and they'll work underground. So there's been some reports that actually look at that form of child support enforcement against low-income populations like that, especially when the money isn't routed to the children, can actually cause an increase in criminal activity and, and a decrease in people working in the above-ground economy. I had to let that white nigga finish. Oh my God. Hey, thank you, Mr. Daniel Hatcher for writing the fucking, whatever the name of that book is, The Poverty Industry, which is a synopsis of my life and how they fucking taking all my little money and giving all my little money to my baby mama and to the state and me and me is a work nigga fucking work. I'm like, can I eat? Hell nah, you can't goddamn eat. I'm like, can I have a place to sleep? And hell nah, you can't have a motherfucking place to sleep. I'm like, well, goddamn Project Daddy is a motherfucking human being too. But for some reason, you know, like even like even niggas, right? Like men, you just got to be a man. I'm like, nigga, I just came out of jail for committing a motherfucking crime trying to feed my family. Now you want me to go back again? Don't get caught. I mean, the logic and all this shit is fucking crazy as hell. And I could have a white zaddy like uh, Daniel Hatcher. I mean, he's probably a good fellow, right? But he's sitting somewhere in his middle class suburban home and he's analyzing my life. And he's making a million dollars off of it, profiting off of my poverty. Goddamn, poverty is America's number one commodity, and they're all making money off of us. Shit is hard to motherfucking breathe in this economic situation, but guess what? You are the greatest motherfucking American alive, and I know the situation is difficult. You ain't never been to prison. Maybe you have. You know, if you look like me, one in three. But maybe you, maybe you, one in seven. Maybe you've never been, yes? But for those of us who are fighting this nasty-ass fight, somehow we have to have in solidarity and say, man, we ain't finna take this shit. Fuck you, man. When the nigga said, they just say, fuck this 65% taxation on my life because that's all child support is. Taxation without representation. And you can say, hey, you can have it. Fuck that shit, man. I'm gonna go out here and sell some dope, sell some, some motherfucking hope. 
Project Daddy, a motivational speaker. Yes, coming soon to a motherfucking Starbucks near you. The greatest American alive, motherfucker. Not me. I'm just Project Daddy, but you are the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.